Hello my fellow gamers and welcome once again to Petaphilos of SimCity Let's Plays. Today I have something special for you. I'm going to let you choose the design that I'm going to use for my second city. But first let me show you the two designs that I have for you. One is the circular city and the other one is a square city. I'm first going to show you how the square city looks like and then I'll just show you the other design. I have built this city in the sandbox mode so that I could test how this idea would look like. I have gotten it up to medium density pretty much all over the place. The main part of this city and the point of this city is to have a university. A university that can be upgraded with a lot of students and then I can research the project that I need which is concentrated solar rays because as you might have noticed I'm using wind power. After that comes concentrated solar rays which give off far more power for the space that they take up. I'm trying to keep using clean energy in this region. So let me show you real quickly how this city looks like. Now bear in mind that the utilities, the garbage dump, the water and the sewage are not going to be in this city in my actual region. I just had to place them here because I didn't have any other cities for them to buy these utilities from. So they're not gonna be in my actual city. Now inside of this city in the middle you're going to find a lot of high land value. Around it there's going to be medium land value and on the edges low land value. Now the industry is on the sides on the left and right side up to half and all the way on top. This is because the wind in this plot blows from down to up therefore any pollution created by the industry placed here is going out the city and not poisoning a lot of my sims. As for the services, the fire departments are here in the middle, also the two clinics are in the middle and the police station is also in the middle. This is all around the university. Now let me show you how the grid for this city looks like. When you come into this city there are two entrances on, and they are both on the right side. There is one square avenue that goes around the entire city on which edges is the industry while on the bottom edge is some commercial and residential. On the inside I keep going in squares and you can see the small neighborhoods on the inner edge. Then on the inside I spiced it up a little bit with some long neighborhoods, some square ones and then again some uneven ones over here. While in the middle, as you can see, is the university with all the government buildings and the services. Now this is working out quite nicely. I have a lot of students, over 3000, which means that I can even at medium density easily get all the research projects that I want done. And you can also see that this university is managing to educate the entire city without any need for other schools or libraries. Now the only problem with this city is that because of the university I have high tech level which means that most of these industrial buildings go up to level 3 tech which is pretty cool if you want to have high tech but the problem comes from the fact that I have a lot of low wealth workers and they are much easier to have in a city and you can have much more of them than medium and high wealth since the building at medium density for low wealth pack a lot of more sims than medium wealth or high wealth Therefore, you can have a lot more low wealth sims. Now, why does that make a problem with the industry? Well, you see, if I have high tech industry because of the university and I have a lot of low wealth workers, those low wealth workers become unemployed, while I have a lot of available jobs for medium and high wealth workers, which I have a lack of. Now, why does that make a problem for me? Well, if I have a lot of medium wealth and high wealth workers, then I have fewer buildings. Fewer buildings means less taxes. Plus you have the problem if you want to raise the taxes for high wealth and medium wealth residents or commercial or even industry they kinda don't wanna let you. They are going to be annoyed even at 10% while the low wealth workers, commercials and factories can be pushed up to 12 or even 13. So that is going to cut down in my profit. But as you can see I have chosen a map that is quite open space and I can have a lot of neighborhoods. At medium density at the moment I'm making 
around 34,000 profit and that's with the university fully upgraded and all the utilities that are in this city. Now you can count on that my city in my actual region is not going to have the utilities here, that's a few thousand more per hour and also I'm not going to have a fully upgraded university, probably 2 or 3 max upgrades so it's going to cost less and I'm going to have even more profit. So it's not a big deal but here is a small trick how can you prevent your workers from being unemployed. If you go to an industry building that is tech level 3 for example, when you bulldoze it and you want to get a new building, the first building that is going to be made, its foundations are going to be for a dirty building, for a dirty industrial building and a dirty industrial building employs mostly low wealth workers. Therefore, if you unzone just at the right moment, you can stop the development of this building from low tech to high tech and then you can have those low wealth workers employed while not having to worry about the shortage of medium and high wealth workers. You can see this is a low density dirty industry, but I'm waiting for medium density. And as you can see here, the tech level is zero, which means this is dirty industry. And by dezoning, I have made sure that this building will stay at tech level zero, be a dirty industry and employ lots of these low world workers. Now that we are done with this city, let's go and see about the other design. Here we are. This is design number two. Now, as you can see, this is a circular design, but with a lot of bridges and tunnels. Now, uh, you probably can't even see all the tunnels, so I'm going to zoom in for you. First of all, like the city before, it, you enter the city through these two network connections. Then you hit this bridge and you can go between these two network connections. On the right side, you get to a tunnel. The same goes for the left side. Through this tunnel, you go all the way up to the edge of the map. From here, you turn on to the right and you turn finally over a bridge into this outermost ring. Now on the other side it is a bit different, you turn from the tunnel to the left, you go over the bridge, but then you hit another tunnel and go all the way to the other side of the map to the outer ring but on the other side. From here you have another two tunnels. The first one leads you to the second ring from the outer ring but on the opposite side and the second one leads you from the outer bottom ring up into the middle ring on its upper side. In the middle you can see here a T intersection, on the right side it leads to the outer ring, on the left also on the outer ring, while on the bottom to the middle ring. Between these rings there are also some streets that connect in between these three rings. In the middle again you have the university, the city hall, the mayor's manor, also there is the police station, the fire stations are on the edges here and here while the clinics are over here and here because most of the sims live on the middle and the outer ring while the inner ring only houses a few high volt sims. That is how the land wealth level is allocated. The inner ring and part of the middle ring have high wealth land value Around it is medium wealth land value and all the way on the edges is low wealth land value. The industry is located on this side over here with the wind map showing you that the wind blows onto the right and therefore my industry is over here. Again do not look at the water pumping station that is over here, the sewage treatment plant or the power station that is down here and the garbage dump that is over here because those like I said, are utilities that are going to be brought from the first city. Therefore, they are not going to be in the city and not be taking up the space. But because this is a sandbox mode and I only have this city in this region, I had to place these utilities so this city could function. Now, I do often tell you in my videos, do not zone on avenues, but there is this exception when you want to make a circle of city. Circle of cities in Square SimCity City plots already take up a lot of space and make 
the space that they do not take up useless just like you can see here I had to add some angular streets in order to have use of the space that is remaining on the edges so therefore you have to zone on the avenues themselves in order to use up as much space as you can in this city also the university is capable of educating the entire city the sims come in by cars or by shuttle buses as you can see I have this bus stop here and it's going to tell you that it has over four and a half thousand riders per day that are coming in onto this bus stop because of the university when it comes to the workers in this city you will notice that my population panel says a lot less population than in the first city also my tax is a lot lower this is because in this city I have a lot fewer low wealth workers and a higher number of medium and high wealth workers now this was created because of this huge land value at medium or even high compared to the first design I showed you and this is a result of having so many industrial buildings at medium density but high tech level that they require a lot more medium and high wealth workers than they require the low wealth but as I showed you in the previous city there is a way to avoid that by having dirty industry and then unzoning the industrial zone so that it cannot turn into medium or high tech industry therefore it is able to employ a lot more of these low wealth workers and if you have more low wealth workers you have more of their children and if you have more of their children then the university has more students if you have more students your research projects are going to advance faster and you're going to be able to level up the university more that was mindful now that you have seen the two designs I'm pretty sure you're going to choose the second design the circular design now it is harder to pull off and I kind of get annoyed by these circular cities but if you like it more then just put your vote in the comment section and tell me which city would you like me to build the square one or this circle one so now that I have showed you the two designs for the second city let me get you back to my first city in my original normal gameplay region Silk Road has reached over 80,000 sims and that's not even its maximum limit because as you will soon see I have a full quarter of the city which is yet to even go up to medium density you can see it right here these huge green stacks show you that all of these sims are very happy with me as a mayor and they're all ready to go up to medium density the only trick is I do not have enough jobs for them therefore I haven't yet raised them up to medium density but again like before there is a catch I will only raise them up to medium density once I have more cities in this region that are going to require workers and just to quickly tell you why I'm going to need more workers you see this plot it is pretty beautiful you have the high winds which means that you can place a lot of wind turbines onto this mountain while all around it I can have a lot of coal and ore mines and after that I can create some metals which means that this city is going to require a whole lot of workers with that in mind in this city I have built a department of transportation as an upgrade for the city hall and then I have already built a passenger train station and a municipal bus station as a prelude to me building the third city now I know I'm going out of my way now telling you about the third city when I haven't even started the second city or finished the first city but that is how you have to plan you have to plan a lot of in advance when you want to make a full working region in this city I have over 400 extra megawatts of power now you might be asking why well take a look at this huge wind farm I have three wind power plants and each of them has 24 wind turbines which means that I have created a huge wind farm on this side of the mountain as for the water and the sewage I have around 300 plus sewage capacity and 400 extra water which means that my second and probably the third city will benefit greatly from these utilities as for the garbage even just with one garbage incinerator I'm able to incinerate most of this garbage but since this city has gone up to almost full medium density and I plan to import more garbage I'm going to place the second incinerator as well I have also had to expand the industrial zones 
up here since before I had two buildings per these streets now I have three and I have also expanded more down here because I simply had to create jobs for all these seems that I have raised up to medium density and you will notice there is a lot of medium density since fully three quarters of my city are up to medium density the only quarter left is this one on the left and even here I have started getting them up to medium density trying to balance out these number of available jobs with unemployment the high school was able to keep up with the number of students before I reached 3000. When I reached 3000 I didn't want to upgrade it anymore because that would require a lot of school buses to be constantly coming into it and that was creating a problem. That is why I opened up my grade school again, turned on some classrooms and let it with its own school buses help in the better education of my city. You can see that I'm up to three and a half hats here and Pretty much every sim in my city is educated except these new kids that have just moved in into the new medium density buildings. The two libraries are also helping with around 600 library patrons per day each. The two clinics are able to, with three ambulances each, pick up all the sick and injured while the two fire stations I have upgraded with an extra fire truck just to keep all the fires under control. The police station has seen a bit more work and they had to stop eating donuts and actually work for a living because I have a few more criminals. Now this is because at some points I had over a thousand unemployment so this is going to drop down now that everybody is employed. So I'm pretty sure I boggled your mind with the amount of information and planning and details that I dropped on you in this video so I'm going to end it right here. Be sure to cast your vote which city design you want me to use for my second city and I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.